Hi everybody. Uh, in this video post what I thought I'd talk about is how we can format our data uh, for the situations where we're looking at trying to analyse that data with what we call a, a multi-scale occupancy model. So in a regular occupancy model we have just sort of two levels of sampling. So we have our, our multiple units uh, which we survey, which we are looking at you know, what fraction of them are, are occupied by our species of interest. And then at each unit we have our repeat surveys of, of some nature either temporally or spatially replicated. In a, a multi-scale occupancy application, we, we think that there's a, a third level of, of sampling going on. So we might have multiple units uh, of interest. At each unit, we might have multiple um, study plots, and that at, at each study plot, we have some sort of you know, repeat survey information to get a detection. So now, just instead of sort of two parameters of interest, sort of, you know, occupancy and detection, we have this sort of third level of sort of local occupancy type parameter as well. And so uh, in some of the literature, these are denoted as, uh, so overall occupancy might be called uh, psi. So psi is the probability uh, unit occupied. And then we have a uh, theta parameter often is used. So, probability, uh, local occupancy, and the key thing is that this is conditional upon the unit occupied. Okay, and then we also have detection, uh, which we just denote with P, so it's the probability uh, of detection in a survey. And that's conditional upon this time local occupancy. So that we have that, um, that other scale, whatever it is, because it could vary with application, uh, is there as well. So this is kind of the, the basic structure. So we've got sort of three levels to, um, of our sampling now. We've got sort of three parameters we, we have to deal with. And you know, exactly what each of these mean is different in different applications. Uh, but people sometimes ask, you know, how do I have my how do I have to have my, my data formatted and, and set up uh, to do such an analysis uh, using program presence, which is what I'll, I'll focus on. And so the idea is that we've got to think about or the key thing when we are trying to decide how we set our data up is thinking about this parameter here, this data parameter, this probability of local occupancy. Um, you know, what, what is that? You know, what scale are we trying to interpret? Um, that's that theta parameter because it can be uh, different in, in different situations and even for the same data set you might set your data up slightly differently to ask slightly different questions about this sort of theta parameter depending upon your, your questions of interest. And so the key is that when we set our data up for the analysis and presence we're going to group our data together. We're going to group our, our zeros and ones, our detection, non-detection surveys um, and that grouping that we use uh, is based around this, this theta parameter. And so the way we have things set up, <clears throat> let's get rid of that, is when we have um, our data, so we have some, some ones and zeros, for example, something like this. Um, what we have is that if we have our data group like this, and suppose this is a situation where we've gone to multiple units, um, at each unit we've got, say, three different study plots, and at each study plot we do three surveys. So if we've got our data grouped into threes, then what we have is that theta one is here, theta two is there, theta three. Three is there. So if we're interested in that theta parameter as the probability that the species is present at a study plot, given it's occupying the unit, we might have our data set up like this, where this is the data from study plot one, this is the data from study plot two, and this is the data from study plot three. Okay, so the way we group our data depends upon how we want to interpret that theta parameter. And sometimes we have different options, even like I said before, for the same data set, um, so that suppose instead of, I mean the way the study was done, we had our, our unit, 
we had our three study plots, and each study plot was surveyed simultaneously each night. So another way we might set that data up is that we would rearrange it so that we group our data in terms of nights. Uh, and then our theta parameters of interest is the probability the species is present in our unit on a given night. Um, and our repeat surveys are actually our spatially repeated study plots. And so that will just give us a different way to interpret theta. So theta parameter here, under the initial uh, approach I talked about, might be like a, a spatial occupancy within an occupied unit. Uh, if we rearrange our data so we group it by night, then our data would become, sorry, our theta parameter would become uh, more a temporal local occupancy or an, or an availability type parameter. And so in that case, we might rearrange our data. So if I can uh, do this appropriately. So this is the, say, the option where we have our, our spatial uh, or our three different study plots, or theta is the spatial parameter. So theta has some sort of spatial interpretation here. If we rearrange our data, so suppose, if I can do this correctly, so we take the same data and so now we're going to rearrange it so that we have our data grouped in terms of nights. It's not a good start. Uh, so one, zero, zero, so just taking the first survey from each of them. And then we have it grouped zero, one, zero, and then one, one, zero. Okay, so again, we've got our, our groupings of our data. And so under this setup, then theta is now that sort of availability parameter. Okay, so there's different ways we can set our data up to ask different questions that, that may or may not be of interest. Well, we'll hopefully address the ones that are of interest and focus on them. Um, but yeah, so that's basically, you know, when we have this multi-scale occupancy model, the way we set our data up is that we want to have our data grouped together, and the way we decide what groupings to use depends upon how we want to interpret that theta, that sort of intermediate or, or local scale occupancy um, perimeter. And... That's all there is to it. So there you go, hope you found that useful. So when we're looking to format our data for analyses, particularly in presence, for a multi-scale occupancy model, we want to have our data grouped together in such a way that those groupings reflect how we want to interpret that theta parameter. Till next time, see you later.